Welcome back, everybody. Um, this is Professor Lusheen. This is the week 11 sort of summary lecture for 41 analysis and design. I hope you all had a decent spring break and got some rest and relaxation, or if not, I apologize, you're in the same boat as me. So what I'd like to do today is quickly go over uh, week 11 with the expectation. It's actually a pretty light week. Um, I always like to make things a little bit easier to ease back into things. And so, um, yeah, so this is the recorded lecture. You all should have received an email invite. You didn't have to attend because I'm going to record it and post it. A panel discussion with a couple of people I've been working with for a while at Research Products. So what I want to do is kind of just go over a few things. We'll start with the um, start with the agenda for this week. Again, this is going to be really short. Um, not much. I, I want to ease back into things. I did extend the deadline for the second case study report. Probably in two weeks, I'll ask you to start giving me some ideas on what your topic is going to be. And next week, I will have, once everybody turns in their case study, next week, I'll be going over the case studies, what I thought. Give you some insights, okay? And you can probably ask some of you if I can use your examples. Um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what the plan is for this semester and the plan for the discussion today. For problem solving, <clears throat> kind of taking a little bit of a turn here. Have you heard of SIFs? Serious injury and fatalities. So it's this movement that's been going on. And I want you all to use your, I was going to say your uh, your online skills, your online research skills, and look this stuff up. And kind of give me a like a one to two page description of what is it, why we should be concerned, and what we need to do about it. So that's the problem solving for this week is talk about SIFs. And then, <clears throat> as in previous weeks, either give me an update on your LinkedIn activities or share some stories or observations from work. There are no additional readings because you're coming up with them. I will probably add this as a thing later, and I so I'm, I'm really interested in what you guys find. And yeah, that's it. So provide a summary of the uh, of what kind of some of the things I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, summary of the lecture that will be recorded this afternoon and posted. Your results from the SIFs goes into problem solving and then your personal professional development. Just give me an idea of how things are going. Yeah, so that's that's what's expected for this week. A uh, couple things. No, first, I'm going to get to the plan for this semester for the remainder. So this week, actually today is the third, and I'm going to be heading up to Green Bay, which is why this is so late and things are kind of weird. We're in the middle of this huge snowstorm, and I got to drive up to Green Bay today. And so I'm looking for a window of opportunity to make that trek. And I've got a two day meeting. It's actually, it starts this afternoon with social events. I'm going to miss those uh, for ASSP. Um, I've got some great news to share, but I can't share it today. I have to wait till next Monday when they make the full announcement. But needless to say, if you remember me bringing up anything that's going on with me, at this point, uh, and we're curious on how it was going to turn out. Turn out turned out well. <laughs> That's all I can say. Shoot, but yeah, they said I can't tell anybody. I got the call yesterday. Um, but this will be my final operations regional operations meeting. Looking forward to it. Hopefully, everybody can arrive safely. We can get through all the business we need to. Um, additionally, we've got the Wisconsin Safety Conference, uh, Safety Health Conference in two weeks. You can go at a discounted rate. Uh, students, it's $100 for two, for both days, 16th and the 17th, or 50 bucks a day. And if you need additional information, reach out to me. I will be sharing that as well, if I haven't already. I think I emailed it to everybody. I'll remind you again. This is a great event. It's held at the Kalahari uh, Resort in the Wisconsin Dells. Great event, great event. If you aren't in Wisconsin and you're up in Minnesota, around Minnesota, the Minnesota Safety Conference is on the 30th of April and May 1st. And it's free. That's right. It's free. Contact me and I can send you information from Janie Ritter. She's the president of the Minnesota Safety Council. And she sent me that message over break. So three really big things. And what does that mean for us? Well, um, let's see. So the 17th, I only speak on the 16th. So I will be back in time for the 17th. Um, so for my classroom group, we'll probably be going on a tour. <laughs> Unless you actually, unless you guys go to the conference, then I'll make a special project for you. Um, but I'll probably talk about the conference that day. 
and then on the first we will not be having it'll be a recorded lecture if you're online like this it'll be recorded otherwise um yeah i won't be holding the face to face there and then the week after that actually your um second case study is due may 10th which would be okay so <clears throat> i'll talk about it here it'll be due over here we will have one more lecture i believe and there'll be some presentations and stuff like that. For online, we'll be meeting for a final time for face-to-face. -face. We'll review your case course binders then. So not a lot left. You know, this week and then one, two, three, four, five weeks. That's it. Not a lot left. So, But we've got some great opportunities. Now, if you are interested in additional learning, I mean, this is really compressed. I, I don't like things on top of each other like that. It's the best I could do. Um, I do have another opportunity. Um... My, one of my mentors, Linda Tapp, had posted this cool event called The Future of Safety, the Impact of Safety and Health on Safety Professionals. It's on Tuesday, April 9th at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central. I am going to sign up for this. Uh-oh. What's going on here? I am going to sign up for this. I'm kind of interested to see what they have to say. Um, I don't know who is speaking in it. But um, I want to check it out. So if anybody's interested, you can do that. You know, it's something I can... Uh, I mean, it's during the day, so I know a lot of you are working and can't make it. But things like that are pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to look more into it. But I think that's actually pretty awesome. So in addition to that and looking up SIFs. And if you're wondering, God, well, what is SIFs again? SIFs. It's serious injury and fatality. This is the Onshore Alliance version. So serious injuries and fatality. So look into it a little bit, okay? I know there's a group out there. This is a big deal to them. I want you just to kind of summarize what it is, why we should be concerned, what we need to do about it, okay? See, it was as easy as that. The last thing I want to do, and it's already longer than I had really had wanted it to be, is I wanted to just kind of give you all an overview or foundation of what we're going to be covering in uh, the recording this afternoon. Uh, we're not specifically going to be, oh, that was really weird. This isn't gonna specifically be the um, presentation, but I've been trying to think about how can I, how can I get you all to kind of contextualize or relate to what it's like when you're kind of thrown into or you step into a new role. And I liken it to waking up in the woods <laughs> and you're like, what, where am I? What am I doing here? And so there, that, so if you think of it that way, I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to kind of propose it. It's kind of weird. So first of all, what are you, you going to do? And so we're going to talk about that because panicking is a likely response, but you got you to gotta get over that quick. First thing you got to do is get your bearings, right? You got to kind of get an idea of the lay of the land. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. Learn management's appetite. In other words, if you were out in the woods, you know what are your risks? What are your immediate risks of harm? Where are your, where are your immediate sources for water and food? Um, get familiar with your surroundings as far as you know what what resources um, can you take advantage of? Um, which ones are your threats? What are weaknesses and strengths? With this, which is a SWOT analysis. One of the things that saved me in my journey is keeping a detailed journal, calendar, and reflection. Um, if you're out in the woods, you need to learn from the things that are working, learn from the things that are not. Whether you're writing into the ground or, you know, writing on the back of bark, you got to start tracking what you're doing. If you're not, then you're just guessing each day. And then finally, get to work. Start tracking what you're doing and assess regularly. This means you're every day you're, you're stepping closer to, you know, um, controlling those threats, to uh, ensuring sustainable sources for survival, things like that. And then you start thinking ahead, like, you know, if there's a storm, if there's a, a mudslide, if, if something crazy happens, um, well, how can you, can you adjust to it? So the first one is don't panic. I think it's really good to write down your assumptions and rules because sometimes you, we need to refer back to them when we're a little bit busy and confused. Uh, I, I practice safety from the perspective it's an attribute of work. I try to study the work, get to know the workers, um, understand how management views it, and then I go through a process of educating them on um, understanding and suspending their natural 
response to things, to blame, to want to force people to to fit into a cookie cutter uh, behavior when that's not the way the world works. And so it, it, it's... It's 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 a challenge, but it when once you've achieved it, and they kind of understand you a little bit better, and how what we do improves their lives. I shouldn't say their lives, their work. Things get a lot better. Yeah, that's what I'll say. This is the get your bearings. You got to assess the status. What do people think about EHS? What are some stories? Um, and identify your sources of information and who can support both internally and externally. Got to do that. Learn management's appetite as far as how much they're willing to invest. How do they view the KPIs and metrics? Uh, how does it fit into their goals? If it doesn't, that's going to be a top priority because they're, if they're not understanding how your efforts are improving or contributing to their goals, man, you're an outsider. And then what are their, what are their main concerns? You got to get those. Uh, some are perceived, some are real, and we have to be able to speak to them, educate them. You need to assess. And so I, I began by looking at injury and illness data, a year's worth. You may have to acquire it. I assessed the quality of it. I found errors. I had to make corrections. You got to do the wall-to-wall -wall visual. There are limitations to that effectiveness, but um, if you have a background in safety and you know how to identify things, you might be able to find something that may be a serious concern versus just an overall feel for what you're seeing. You know, oh, they're all supposed to be wearing hearing protection. Nobody's wearing it. That's that's an indicator. Write that down. Uh, next is make sure you meet with either your safety committee or safety team, or a rep from each department. You gotta get you gotta get some insight into who's who's experienced what, where are things going on, and this this is all supposed to be building onto things you analyze and things you saw. Then perform your gap analysis on the current program. What's there, what's currently in place, identify what's missing or what major pieces are missing. And you got to start working on that too. Perform a SWOT. I talked about that. That's your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And then finally, uh, based on all you've done, begin writing priorities and goals and make sure they align with the, <laughs> with the management's goals, not goals. <laughs> Sorry about that. A journal is what really saved me. Um, I was writing things down hourly initially, then daily, then weekly. Make sure you are tracking who you're speaking to, what you're seeing, what you're working on, what the response was. I have like pictures and videos um, imputed into my Word document. I did all that. And then I can look back on it and I was able to mine information from it in order to do some analyses. Make sure you are tracking your efforts because who else is going to be your cheerleader but yourself? Uh, make sure you're making connections. Um, you want people to pull you aside and share things, to ask you questions, to come to you. That's really important. So you got to get out there and talk to people, know people, and don't just run up and just only talk about safety. Get to know them. You know what are they? What are their interests? It helps with learning their names too. Make sure you every opportunity you can to not only be a positive influence on the company, but to show management your ability to be organized and to produce results. You gotta be sharing data. There has to be a demonstration that progress is being made, okay? Um, don't just say, yeah, it's coming along, or yeah, I'm almost there. Show them, constantly show them. And then finally, make sure you are regularly reflecting on you know, the things I did this last week. Did they move me towards my goals or did they inhibit my progress? Am I tracking the right things? Um, what isn't working? What can I do to study it or understand it more? Am I, you know, do I need more assistance? Things like that. Yeah. So that that's one. This is your. This, it's it's continuous improvement is what it is, both for the program and you. The last piece is get to work. Um, sometimes when we have so much to do, we're just juggling and we're not we're not progressing. We're not getting anything done. So try to remain positive, be supportive of other groups, but get out there and do something, man. Um, and that's where the documentation and efforts come in. Yes, there are always going to be fires to put out. Yes, there's always going to be something that gets in the way. Make good use of your time. Um, you got to show your value. If you're just spinning your wheels and trying to write programs and come up with training, that's 
you got to do something more than that. You got to get out on the floor. You got to be doing stuff. That's really, really important. And lastly, you're going to have to be educating others about your importance and how you contribute because they have their own beliefs. It's um, it's better if you're the one kind of pushing that discussion. Oh man, this was 15 minutes. That's so uh, that's what I want to kind of share. It's going to be kind of the foundation of what we kind of cover today uh, when we do the presentation. Um, both Corey and Micah, they've got backgrounds in other places too, as do I. And we're all going to talk about it because I think what we're doing is what all kinds of other people have done for a very long time. And that is to um, tame the Bronco. I should, that's what I should have called it, is taming the Bronco. Um once you do, man, it's 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 a great thing. So that's all I got for this week. You got questions, let me know. Um, I am attempting to get you all another set of mentors to interview. And actually, I'm trying to tap into this group that I'm going to be meeting with this week up in Green Bay. Um, a lot of them already said yes, but then this snowstorm is throwing a wrench into everybody's thinking. And I will try to come back around. I'll try to do some recordings and interviews while I'm there as well. So have a great week, everybody.